should be a 008 and a 007. Yes, so I there, do have James will Bond. Be a, there will be a James Bond there somewhere, if you can find it. Oh, I've, I've got both. Excellent. Great. Yes, I actually lined them up. I was organised during the week for about oh, two minutes. I was either organised or bored. I can, it's, it's, okay. it's a fine line between the two. Um, yeah. So I'm going to hand over to you because you've got the tasting notes in front of you. I'm sorry I don't have no, my no, January no. pack in front of me. The, so why don't we look at James Bond 007? Even even encyclopedias have ends. And the, Indeed. So, oh, okay. This, this says it's a made in 2020, 39 months, X Heaven Hill cask, American oak. For mm -hmm. finishing six months in a Pinot, Pinot de Chirante Rouge cask. Oh, very nice, very nice. So I'll tell you a bit about Pinot de Chirante Rouge while you're savouring that. Um, so in the cognac tradition, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the cognac makers of southwest France will produce a fortified product called Pinot de Chirante. Chirante, of course, is the river that runs through the cognac region and comes out at the coast at La Rochelle. Um, and Pinot is P-I-N-E-A-U, as, as distinct from Pinot Noir, which is P-I-N-O-T. And how, what they do is that they blend 50% cognac with 50% wine, and they put that into a barrel and mature that, and that ends up being the Pinot de Charente. And there are two forms of it. There is the... Pinot de Chiron Blanc, which is obviously using the white wine, so it would normally be a Uni Blanc grape variety or Semillon. And then there's the Rouge version, which in this case is using Merlot. So Merlot, 50% Merlot, 50% Cognac, matured in French oak for maybe 10 or 15 years. Uh, that's the Pinot de Chiron Rouge. So this spirit started in a, in a bourbon cask for three, three and a half years or so, We've then moved it into the uh, Pinot de Chiron Rouge as a finish, and it's created a beautiful pink hue. I don't know if you can pick that up uh, in what you've poured, but it has a lovely pinkish kind of hue to it, which is from the Merlot contribution to the Pinot de Chiron. Uh, but some of the some of the, some of the, the notes that I picked up when I was tasting it were um, it, it very much sort of. Um, sort of rose petals and Turkish delight, some love, those lovely um, perfumous sweet notes. Yeah, there's certainly a lot happening in the nose. Mm. Makes me know. Uh... We're going to be launching to market in July this year a Pinot de Chiron Blanc uh, finish cask, which we're calling Pinot 350 because it's the barrel number is barrel 350. Uh, and we're hoping to launch it in early July and I will do a live cross from uh, Cognac. So I'll be uh, on the site of one of the producers of Pinot de Charente to launch our Pinot cask whiskey. How cool is that? Um, well, but yeah, no, this is a lovely example of uh, a, a French style of fortified cask. Um, and one of, the, one of the challenges in Australia with our own fortifieds is it's quite difficult to get good quality fortified casks um and so we've been exploring uh fortifieds from other countries where we can secure a reliable um amount of casks and so we tried the pinot de chiron rouge and the pinot de chiron blanc uh we've been very happy so far with that experimentation that we're that we're following um aren't the argentinians coming online because they produce a couple of shit tons of um grapes themselves mm. yeah yeah um, we haven't we haven't looked at that yet, but it's more of a fortified tradition that I'm interested in. So I don't know what do the Argentinians do some fortifieds. I would gladly look into you. I know that I um, subscribe to a couple of Argentinian gym websites, so my Spanish is coming okay. on quite nicely. Thank you very much. Um, I a lot of Spanish these days. Um, and you... I know that there is. So when I was in Italy a couple of years ago, I tried a lovely fortified Italian. Wine, which is a, is a, is an orange flavour. I don't know what it's called. I can't to the, bring to the top of my mind what it is, but it's like a it's like a, a an Italian version of Saturn, but just a little bit more 
earthy in its um, in in its um, style. Um, and I, I thought I might try and get one of those as well. I know that um, that Lark did a Chinoto cask, and that was very successful. So something along those lines, we might play around with that as well. Now, what are you going to do? I mean, and when they're eighteen, they can join Dad and and, and enjoy all these wonderful whiskies and gins that he has behind him. Um, well, the bottles are empty. Okay. They're all empty. It's my my qualification in um, knowing what I'm what the fuck I'm talking about is that. I've tried about 300 gins. 